here's some QAs that uh, we put up on Facebook that we thought we'd do for y'all. Of course, being me, it's a lot of them to do with decoys. I'm going to start off with uh, Bobby Brown and Zach Kostrom. Zach's from Washington. Bobby didn't say where he was from. But anyway, his question was, what do you think of spinning wing decoys? And Zach's question was, electronic decoys are illegal in Washington, but they are considering legalizing them. What's your opinion? Well, there's a lot of controversy with spinning wing decoys all across the country. We use them. Uh, they're a tool. They're a tool to help you kill more ducks, and they do work. They're getting their, they was the best thing since sliced bread when they first come out, but now after a while the ducks, they seem to get used to them. So some days are better than others on when to use them. I mean, you'll know by that first bunch, the way that first bunch acts to, towards them. You'll know where to pull them or keep them out. But my opinion of them is, hey, we got enough laws against us as, as it is. And it, if we can use them, we need to use them. There too. Uh, ben Mortensen. Larger decoy spread always seem to pull in more birds. What's the most effective decoy pattern? And I'm going to answer Rodney Contrail's question too. And this is something we all face. How do you set up when late season ducks flare off of live ducks? I see it over and over and over. And the, que and the answer is Brian's statement, larger decoy spread. That's what helps. But as far as a pattern, you just want to have them where they're, we kind of space them out a little bit further than we usually, usually do. You want to, we probably say, well, a five foot rule, keep them both in five foot of each other. That way the wind don't blow them and bang them into each other and they just look like they're spread out and they're just feeding about because it's just a big glob of them when you look at them out on the field if you see a whole lot of them they just they're not just in any kind of shape or they're just haphazardly everywhere so just a lot of decoys and um, just spaced out Andrew Zeal asked uh, to explain how to set up decoys for tail in September in South Texas now, there's a lot of teal in South Texas, that's for sure, but when we set up decoys for teal, the main thing you want to do is scout the area and find out where they, where you see a lot of them at and try to get as close to that spot as you can get. But with teal, you can put teal decoys just right in front of your position. You know, most of the time when we set up decoys, it's either upwind or downwind of our position, but teal are like right in the decoys, so you can just put them right in front of you where you want to shoot. Jamie Darnell asked, when do you think the best time to hunt mallards, clear and cold or cloudy and cold? Clear and cold, we tend to stay to the woods. Cloudy and cold, we tend to go to the fields and hunt. I guess the sun reflecting off the water, I don't know, it just seems like it's just a heyday in the woods when it's clear. Okay, Andrew Howes asked how to put a decoy spread out in the marsh in Louisiana and also in the flooded timber. We, I hadn't hunted much in the marsh, but I would tend to think it'd be kind of like fields with lot, a bigger spread, lots of decoys. The more decoys, the better, because you're going to be having a good open area where they can see a long ways and see them decoys down there and come check them out. In the flooded timber, we hunt, you know, small holes in the timber. You want to put the buggy decoys up into your position and not in the hole. We put just a small amount in the edge of the hole and then the rest of them out in the woods. And we'll put spinners out there kind of under the limbs and stuff where they're not really seeing them, but they're just getting glimpses of them. But that's what them ducks do. They'll light in a hole and then they'll swim in the woods to feed. So that's just what you're emulating. Jamie Berkeley, he's trying to use a jerk rig system and he's wanting to know when and how we use ours. 
we use ours when we see ducks and everybody starts calling. I'm pulling on them jerk strings. I'm trying to make as much commotion as I can make. I mean, I'm jerking it so hard, I'm trying to yank the decoys off of it. And as they come and start getting closer, I'm still, I'm still getting on. When they get straight overhead, I stop and just let the ripples go do what they're gonna do. And then when they pass right over, I'm back, especially when they pass over. I'm trying to yank them decoys off that string again. I want to make as much commotion as I can make. And as they turn, but every time they get, when they get close and they're making that turn, you just kind of get off of it a little bit. And when they get behind you or right to the side of you, just let them have it again. That's, what, that's how you do it. All right, Ron Jones asked, how many components of your cows are sourced in the USA? Every one of them. Josh Beauchamp, Beauchamp, I'll probably get called on that one. Do you really have to do much calling with wood ducks? Well, wood ducks are the hardest ducks to call. We, we make a wood duck call and we do call them. Uh, They'll come to you on the water, swim to you on the water faster. But if you do in sounds that they do on the water, most people make the mistake of when they pick up a wood duck call is to do flying sounds, you know, which you hear, hear them doing when they're flying. Well, if he's flying and you're flying, what y'all doing, racing? You want to do the sounds they do sitting on the water. There's several, four or five different sounds they, they do. And that'll pique their interest if you start doing that. That'll pique their interest when you when you see them and you start doing that. And they'll come buzz over and they gonna get close enough for you to shoot. Or the flight woodies that come down, they'll, they'll actually come in and decoy. But it does work. Oh, here's Billy, Billy Carey. How'd you decide on the camo pattern for your face? Well, I just wanted to be a little different. And I just, it actually was just a couple of streaks at first and it just come into more and just got to be a, like it's four, four uh, applications is all I do real quick. I just put it and dab it on my finger and get it kind of fat and I just go and I'm done. But I just wanted to be a little different. Mike Joseph, he wants to know what's my favorite duck to eat and how do I cook it? The favorite is uh, really torn between the teal and the wood duck. Both of those are fine eating. And the way I cook them, my favorite way, I eat them all kind of different ways. My favorite way is to cut them breasts out and the butterfly and open them up Put some cream cheese in there, jalapeno pepper, close it back up, wrap it in bacon, put it on the grill and you grill them to a medium. You don't have to do it well done. If you do it well done, you'll dry them out. And they're foul, they're not poultry, so you won't, you won't get sick off of it. But we also put that Duck Commander rub on there just as much as you can get on it. Just turn them just red almost and it cooks in real good into the meat. It's got a real good flavor to it, but I like it. My woman, I tell you, if you cook that for your woman like that, she's gonna give you gas money, shotgun shells, go get me some more of that. Let's see, John Show. he wants to know, as being a duck man, my only job, and what did I do before? I got this gig. Yep, this is my only job now. And what I did, I worked at the paper mill at the, well, that it was a carton plant. I run a printing press for 21 years. Boy, that was a long time. But that's what I did. I run a printing press 21 years. Now I'm working my dream job. My hunt for a living and fish for a hobby. Sean Wolf, he wants to know, he said, you used to race dirt bikes. What did you enjoy most about it? <clears throat> I raced motocross for, I started when I was nine years old racing motocross and I think uh, I mean it's a good family 
deal to have. I mean, you, you, my dad was my mechanic, and we spent countless hours together, you know, on the weekends and all during the week, tearing the motor down and rebuilding it and putting new piston rings, whatever. But there's one thing that got me always, and just the just the uh, racers are gonna understand what I'm facing to say. It's when you get to that point and you really feel the power and that wind coming by you where you're almost riding over your head but still in control and you just, you give it a little more. Uh, that's what got me. Joey Bonio, I know I didn't say that right, what kind of music do you like and who's your favorite music singer? Well, since we've been hunting with Jason Aldean and Luke Bryan, I've, I've enjoyed their music. It's a little more upbeat because I like rock and roll music. And my favorite band, I still listen to them, is Rush. Well, you wasn't expecting that, was you? Mark Powers, he says, obviously y'all can hunt anywhere, but where's your favorite place? My favorite place to hunt, I guess, and it don't matter where, what state, it's just long as it's in the timber. Timber's just, it's just something about it. They're, they get closer. Uh, it's just something about them coming down through them trees because, man, when they come down in there, they ain't but one way they can get back out, and that's the way they come in, and you can really tear them up. So the timber's just long as it's timber. Chris Napper, he says, well, how do you feel about your nickname, The Walrus? Well, let me tell you how I got that nickname. Uh, Phil shot a deer, and uh, he didn't make a good shot on him. It, it got away from him a little bit. So everybody, of course, he went, everybody come in and told him that deer stories, you know. He said, I got one down, I can't find it. So everybody goes out, and we get on the blood trail. So everybody goes and we all get off. Well, everybody's going. It looked like he went to the left. Well, I looked over here to the right. There's a big briar thicket and just a little old bitty hole looked like looked like a coon trail. Didn't even look like a deer trail. But I got to thinking that deer's hurt, and I said, I bet you he went through that briar thicket. So I went up out of that hole and looked down on the ground. And I found a speck of blood. I said, Yep. So I had to get down and crawl through that briars, them saw briars and green briars. I was crawling through there, and that's how Phil described it. I found the deer, but that's how Phil described it. He said, old Goblin got down there, he's better, better than a dog. That he got down there like old walrus and going through that briar patch. So that's how the walrus, walrus stuck with me. And heck, I don't mind. If you hang around this bunch enough, it's gonna change for long. Well, that's all the questions we got time for right now. Stay tuned. We're going to have some more boys coming at you.